Well, it's that time of year again, early September, that time between summer blockbusters and Oscar movie season where the studios service cheese. Oh yeah, and it's also musical March in September. Because <laughs> that joke didn't get old the first year I did it. And what would Musical March in September be without something related to Robert Stigwood? If there's an idea, put to screen that was inspired by behind-the-scenes cocaine use, Stigwood will make it happen. So when Grease became the highest grossing film in 1978, naturally producer Alan Carr was given a sweet deal to produce a sequel, this time being directed by Patricia Birch, the choreographer of the first film, but without the involvement of the original composers or lead actors John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John. So the story is set two years later in 1961 and is about an exchange student who falls in love with one of the more rebellious teens at Rydell High. In other words, different names, reverse sexes, same characters. The film is mainly known for being the first starring vehicle for Michelle Pfeiffer, or maybe it's starring her struggling actress Susie Q character from the Hollywood Nights, and this was Susie's first big break. We all remember the classic animated opening from the first Grease, so what does Grease 2 have in store for us? Spending my vacation in the summer sun, getting lots of action, having lots of fun. Feet! It's giving us feet. It's the first day back at school and already they're failing dance class. Eddie Deason's Eugene is back. How has he not graduated early? He was the smartest student there. This feels like Bob Fosse staged a zombie invasion. So much for the no walking on the grass policy. How weird would it be if this movie's plotline intersected with Gus Van Sant's Elephant? Just kidding, more things happen in this movie. Ah, uh, the T-Birds just got back from the bar from cruising. They are so gonna be late for class. Good morning, Mr. Mason. Look, I would really love to see all of you in music appreciation this year, okay? I'd like to see all of you in music appreciation this year. This whole school is a music appreciation class. Maxwell Russell Crowfield stars as Sandy's cousin, and speaking of the first film, is that Frenchie? See, I used to go to Rydell before I dropped out to go to beauty school, but then I flunked tinting when my hair turned pink. Pink? <laughs> You're right, I should be watching Grease. There's something a little off about these students. The pink ladies pledge to act cool, to look cool, and to be cool, till death do us part. Get it? They're about to join a suicide cult. Guys, if you keep this up, you'll be too wiped out for gym class. Speaking of, I'm starting to wonder why Danny Zuko was so bad at sports. Everyone here seems great at it. This song is the opposite of School's Out by Alice Cooper. These students are happy to be back to school in the one place they can freely smoke cigarettes. I gotta go back! sold me. I'm gonna go watch Back to School instead. Ah, uh, hey, it's Adrian Zemed as Johnny, making Grease 2 vital viewing to see Officer Romano's backstory. And Christopher McDonald is there, which makes me think that Tappy Tibbins is a more appropriate name for a Grease character. Unfortunately, exchange student Michael is not making new friends. Hey, Miss Marco, excuse us. No one touches these lockers, okay, pal? Without taking a good oiled-up fisting first, Johnny is replacing a dead student and sometimes they come back. Need some more reminders of the first movie? <laughs> Cut that out. That joke was funny in the first movie. We don't need it here, too. Come up with your own jokes. Welcome back. Mr. Spears, we're all rooting for you. <laughs> <laughs> See? That guy's dead!
And there's even explosions going on in one of the other classrooms. Michelle Pfeiffer plays Stephanie, and she and Johnny are on the outs, probably because he may be a date rapist. So Michael totally has an in. Or does he? I think there's something you don't understand. You see, Stephanie Zanoni is a pink lady, which means if you're not a T-bird, which you are not, you can look, but don't touch. Yeah, the T-birds will comb your hair to death. What the fuck, are there no trespassing laws in this town? Oh, hey, Jan Michael Kevin Bacon is back. They're the enemies of the T-birds, just like in Greece. These cockroaches are gonna invade our turf one time too many. Thanks, Tony Montana. That's a different Michelle Pfeiffer movie. Look at these shirts. The T-Birds have obviously sold out. Michael wonders how he too can become a T-Bird. Isn't it obvious? Your ass has to look great in gym shorts. And you have to be a fucking cheater when playing against nuns. And don't get me started on the terrible pickup lines. You got something going with Paulette? Let us say I'm giving her therapy for her disease. What disease? The genital warts he gave her. I'm not so sure about this bowling alley. Come on, everybody, gather round. I'm gonna show you how to knock them down. You're supposed to be bowling. Why aren't you bowling? Let's bowl, let's bowl, let's rock and roll. Hey, come on, let's get the show on the road. Let's bowl, let's bowl. No, no, that's not how you bowl. If you want to sing, go to a karaoke bar. Unless you're not really singing about bowling. We're gonna score tonight. We're gonna score tonight. We're gonna rock, we're gonna roll. Hmm, they're not singing about bowling at all. They're singing about sex. Since when do lyrics in a Grease movie have double entendres? And then the Big Lebowski Broadway musical immediately closed its doors. Synchronized bowling is the worst thing to happen to Olympics since Ryan Lochte. This song better have a great ending. Always be courteous when asking for a game. The movie just cut away from its own song. Even the movie wants to change the radio station. Christopher McDonald is the goose to Johnny's Maverick. What about the trophy for best score, Stephanie? I ain't no one's trophy, Goose. Ooh. And by that, I mean his name is actually Goose. But Stephanie has had enough of Johnny and dares to be independent. <laughs> That's look of a man who really wanted to be the first one to kiss Maxwell Caulfield. Great, they all left. Now Michael is stuck with the only person who looks young enough to be playing a high schooler. Their chemistry is making me feel uneasy. Well, it's pretty late. I think I better walk you home. Oh, I don't need a babysitter. Okay. Well, why don't you think of it as a date? Okay. And then he went to jail. All right, Rydell, we've delivered to you one tab hunter. Sorry he's a little late and has some wear and tear. This movie is missing something. I can't think of what it is. That is why we are going to win this talent show. 100 long playing albumin. No, it wasn't a talent show. Can I watch one teen musical that doesn't involve a talent show? His loafers were regions. His chinos were black. Ah, oh, yes, a song about loafers and chinos. That's what it was missing. Bring on the song about Chuck Taylors. Nice to see the stage version of whatever movie Justin Thoreau was directing in Mulholland Drive. Let's hear more of these lyrics. Here from Brad. There's a hundred LPs at stake here, and I won't let a little hard work come between me and that prize. What is with this movie talking over its own musical numbers? I'm not gonna buy the album to hear the full song. Hell, Michael asks out Stephanie in the middle of a song. Hello. Hi. I wanted to ask if you're free after school today. Yeah, I'm free every day. <laughs> it's in the Constitution. <laughs> what he means is he wants to bang you. Give him a break. He wore his best cardigan and she brought her biggest O. But she answers his question by telling him what kind of men she likes. Well, I'm looking for a dream on a meat machine with hell in his eyes. I want a devil to skin tight leather. A simple no would have been just fine. Okay, keep talking about your turn-ons. Cool cool 
So, she wants to fuck a ladder? Great, now this empty room knows that you really want to fuck the Sons of Anarchy. I'd prefer you not smell like Marlboros and cheap beer after sex. So Michael decides to get a motorcycle, which goes along with the theme of both Grease movies, which is be yourself. <laughs> or not. I say this as someone who is totally myself and not a character. What the hell class is Tab teaching? Reproduction. <laughs> The students are horny enough as it is. Please tell me there's not going to be a sex song. The parts of a flower are so constructed that very, very often the wind will cause pollination. This is when the movie gives up any kind of symbolism and just comes right out and says it's singing about sex. Now you see just how the stamen gets its lusty dust onto the stigma. And why this frenzied chlorophyllous orgy starchy spring is no enigma. Why does Tab sound like he's going through puberty right in the middle of the song? This is exactly what Estes Perko warned us about if the commies ever took over. Reproduction. Reproduction. Is that all you think about? Reproduction. I don't remember Schoolhouse Rock being so suggestive. I'm shocked that this song leads to students chasing skirts and hitting on the hot teacher. Rydell High is rapey enough without the reproduction song. And I don't think Tab Hunter is interested in you, honey. Why didn't this movie just call itself Porky's the Musical and call it a day? I miss the wholesome music of movies like The Apple. <laughs> Maybe you're remembering that movie wrong. I feel a climax coming on. Where does the pollen go? And then half the school experienced teen pregnancies. Don't believe me? I'm a little worried. I've missed my last two periods. That's all right, dear. You can make them up after school. Where does the pollen go? <laughs> She's all kinds of knocked up. Oh, reproduction song. You probably should have mentioned condoms at least once. Thankfully, Michael now has enough money to buy that motorcycle. <laughs> well, he may not impress Stephanie, but he won second place on America's Funniest Home Videos. A fucking baby won first place again. Oh, good. Frenchie's back to serve her purpose in the movie. Holding on to the lead character's helmet. And is it too much to ask for original music? Mr. Sandman, bring me a dream. These are my boys. Ugh. Stealing from the Halloween 2 soundtrack, are we? Ooh, we get to see the actor's audition tape for playing the new T-Birds. Walk, walk like T-Birds tonight! Oh! Thank you! Eh, just hire them anyway. It's only Grease 2. After a while, I simply don't even know what's going on in this movie. Bum, 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 Mr. Sandman, bring me a dream. Make her the cutest that I've ever seen. Just spying on a singing group in the men's room? What the fuck, 1960s bathhouses? Oh no, Stephen King villain is back. Hopefully our heroes can step up and save the day. Oh, you oh I forgot that T-Bird is also a double meaning for fucking pussies! Breaking into song isn't gonna make you seem tougher, either. Michael shows up as a mysterious biker figure, and sure enough, they all start singing about him. He came out of the darkness in the middle of the night, blazing like a mother with a fist of dynamite. He's gonna take a tumble with one solitary thrust. And then all of them came together in their agreement that they all want to fuck Maxwell Caulfield. And that no one wants to be with Johnny. Yo, maybe I'm tired of being someone's chick. She was promised a John Travolta or a Jeff Conway, not Tom Hanks' buddy from Bachelor Party. Thankfully, the exterminator shows up just in the nick of time. Alright. 
stress so much for the whole I'm tired of being someone's chick thing. And since when do cops exist in this universe? He tells Frenchie that he made quite the impression while she's busy conducting a science experiment for The Sims. Who would have thought he'd have trouble asking out a girl who wears flannel and loves bowling? I bet I know what happens next. After a nuclear drill at the school, one of the T-Birds tricks a pink lady into a fallout shelter so she can lose her virginity while a fake nuclear alarm goes off. <laughs> Wait, what? For if we give our very best, I know that we will more than pass the test. What are you doing, Louis? Get off of me! Think about it. Well, you've heard the reproduction song. Now here's the rape song. Yes, do it for your country, or he'll fucking shoot you! And this is where Under the Dome really jumped the shark. Why is this working? And I'll win this war for you. Let's do it for our country. Our country wants us to. And this is exactly how Roger Ailes tried seducing his employees. She soon realizes it's a ruse and tries her luck in John Goodman's fallout shelter. Meanwhile, Stephanie is at work with Mad Maxwell right behind her. He's a bad influence. She ditches out on work and rides around without a motorcycle helmet. They're actually about to win a hundred grand playing Nerve. Sure, we can get Tony Scott to direct this shot, but what's it say about her that goggles make Michael unrecognizable? He almost tells her he's the guy from Empire Records, but oh no, John Fred and his Playboy band show up to chase him away. And when the girls no longer want anything to do with Johnny, he at least has his bros. I think we could all use a little guaranteed. <laughs> all the way action. And I know just the place. Yeah? yeah? Well, come on and tell us, Johnny! What's the secret of success? He's gonna take them to Chippendales. This movie is stranded at the third act, branded a fool. What will they say, Monday at the box office? But Johnny is an optimist. Yeah, well I love them all. They love me. Johnny, not even a real lamp post, wants to be in the same shot as you. They begin chasing the girls behind the screen, which makes me wonder, what are the random cashiers doing hanging out behind a giant screen with fake cash registers? What is this universe? So even though she has a crush on Superman, Clark Kent still asks her out. I think about it. Good. Michael's gonna continue posing for his calendar. Let's see how their study date goes. You know, I usually don't do this bad in English. It's just like I got other stuff on my mind these days. Anything I can help you with? No, it's not with school. Forget it. Let's just get this stuff over with. Well, they're both failing chemistry. At least Michael knows how to get out of the friend zone, create a leather daddy alter ego. Thankfully, Johnny is busy pretending to ride motorcycles and also threatening his goose while Michael stares at his ass. Mm, just like the cafeteria scene from Animal House, if they all got their food like normal. And if a musical number sorta happens. Yes, I really messed up by trying to be true Mickey. when only one heart can be there. He's only thinking his musical number, since it'd be so weird in this universe for someone to burst out in a song. Oh, never mind. He's singing now. Now he just looks like a freak for beginning to sing mid-song. And his homework for the night is to finish the song at home privately. Here Michael is singing about how he's questioning his identity because of his dual roles. Surely. Yikes. And then he shot everyone. Time for the talent show, and Johnny is still jealous of the masked writer. To think all of this happened because Johnny moved to Chicago. He used to be the leader of Rydell's Buttercream Gang. During the chase, Michael makes a huge jump over something, which means that he must be dead. The leader of the pack, now he's gone. Vroom, vroom. Best put off the talent show. Guys, Michael just died. A little sensitivity, please. A dead biker ain't gonna stop Johnny from pushing around his girl. But I gotta dress like this, Johnny. I'm summer. 
look, then get yourself a pair of galoshes, a, 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 a snowsuit scarf, and, and, and be, be winter. And that is Johnny Nagarelli's final word. Johnny is the type to say, tell me more, did she put up a fight? And fucking mean it! Gotta love those old lingerie high school talent shows from the 60s, but let's see how the T-Birds do. Tonight, tonight. That wasn't a clip, that was their entire musical number. Seriously. Perhaps the pink ladies will do better. Why are you clapping? This is how it should go. Not that it matters. The damn singing baby is gonna win the contest anyway. She's having trouble remembering the lyrics, you know, because the whole masked writer may be dead thing. So she sings her own song. I'm gonna miss all the things we'll never do. That's how you tell the school that one of their students may be dead. Or is he? Never mind, he's not dead. He's stuck in Xanadu. Someone sneezed in the cocaine. How is the production team supposed to function now? So she's having a duet with a ghost? The only thing that matters is that I love you. And you're the only one who can keep our love alive. So Stephanie, don't forget me. I promise. And then she starts dating the captain of the football team and instantly forgets Michael. If this was all in her mind, then who the hell was singing the other part of that duet? This has been another successful Miss Velma's Christmas, but now it's time for the post-talent show luau. Because fuck going to class and learning something. They're singing about the summer finally being here, and fuck you for suggesting this story was taking place over the course of nine months. I'd believe it if you ended with a carnival scene and not the first annual Rydell High Hunger Games. Oh, hey, heart attack teacher's still alive. Mr. Spears? Oh, good heavens. <laughs> but he's dead now! A great crater face again, because God forbid this movie doesn't push two hours. Someone put it into this. Damn. Holy shit, Steve fucking Perry. Ah, uh, Michael's not dead. I totally thought he was dead. This movie is really obsessed with the fact that it has a stuntman who can jump things. This happens a lot in this film. So after chasing away Craterface, Michael has officially become part of the gang that peaks in high school. And Johnny learns not to verbally abuse his love interests. So Michael and Stephanie end up together, and I guess it's over? God damn it, stop singing! I don't care who these people end up with! Will I ever score? There's nothing wrong with just liking each other. That man tried trapping you in a bomb shelter! This song is less like a Grease song and more like a Grease sound alike. Acoustic, mellow, we go together doesn't quite have the same ring to it. And then they graduate and the movie Less Than Zero begins. But not before belly flopping and cannonballing on concrete, thus breaking their spines and asses. So if Greece was secretly about a girl who drowns and ascends to heaven at the end, this is what it would be like if Sandy went to hell. Grease 2 was intended to be the second installment in a proposed Grease franchise, which would have included four films and a TV series. That didn't happen. 
the movie was shooting for Greece box office numbers, but its box office intake was $15 million, making it more like the other 1978 Travolta film, moment by moment. The movie certainly feels like a sequel to Grease. Aesthetically, it looks the same, has a similar storyline, similar camp and cheekiness to its performances, but without solid chemistry or the catchy and memorable musical numbers that I secretly sing to myself in the shower. And it never really seems like Michael falls in love with her in the way that Danny and Sandy fell for each other. In this, it just seems like he wants to bang her after seeing her walk by once. I guess Michelle Pfeiffer is really good in it, though. Believe it or not, the movie had a stronger success in India, where it was remade as the 1987 film Prima Loca. Eh. Primaloka. I'm not watching that. It's like two and a half hours long. I'll wait for the live primetime TV special. Thank you very much. It's better to play with a group than with yourself.